Hello, everybody. Uh, um, I was going to do a video on something completely different. Um, or at least this talk was going to be completely different. And then for the last three hours, I keep getting phone calls from this company called U.S. Books. And if you guys have an Amazon page, you probably have gotten a call from these people too. I don't understand how they got my number. That's the thing that trips me out. So I have to look into how the fuck this happened. But they called me to tell me or ask me or whatever about some book fair in New York in November and they wanted to represent my book. And if I was the author of, like, I don't know what the fuck she was saying, like, Fupa something, or Mufucker, or Mufupa, or I, I have no idea. Like, uh, some book I've never fucking heard of before. And I'm like, look, like, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, you're Matt Wall, the author, right? And I'm like, yes. And she's like, okay your book and then she said it again and I couldn't fucking understand her she's like do you own the rights to that book because we really want to represent it at this thing and I'm like okay this is probably a scam and she's probably reading off of some fucking thing but like humor me tell me what the fuck it is you're talking about and she just kept saying the same fucking things over and over again and I fucking hung up on her twice and she kept calling back. She's like, oh, Mr. Matt Wall, we have been disconnected somehow. <laughs> and I'm like, like, I'm like, I disconnected it. I hung up. Like, you're not answering my questions. I'm asking you very simple questions and you're not answering them. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. What questions were you asking? And so I would ask the questions again and she would answer him the exact same way, which was not at all. And I'm like, look, I'm having a hard time understanding you. Um, could you possibly send me your proposal by email? And she's like, okay, what's your email address? I'm like, I hate mattwall at gmail.com. And so that was a whole fucking other ordeal. She's like, I hate Mac, Mac, what? Mac, Mac Wool? Like, McWool? And I'm like, no, I hate Matt Wall. Matt Wall, the guy you are calling right now, the guy you're talking to. And then she starts fucking cracking up laughing. And um, so I'm like, okay, this is just not working. She's reading off a fucking script. Maybe I could fucking, like, get into her head a little bit. And I'm like, what's your name? I'm like, J if you could just tell me what your name is so I know who I'm talking to, I'd feel a lot better. So then I started calling her by her name. And I'm like, I'm going to say, let's say her name's Sarah. And I'm like, listen, Sarah, like, you sound very professional and you sound like you're doing your best here. But I'm having very specific questions that you're not seeming to answer. So if you could, like, I would love it if you could just either email me the information or, um, put somebody on the phone who could answer my questions and she was in a call center so like I'm hearing all these other voices and um she just kept saying like you know we just want to give you the best exposure possible and I'm like doing what I'm like tell me what you can do because I'm guessing there's a lot of stuff that you're offering that I already know how to do but if there's something that I don't know how to do that you guys are offering I may be interested in that. So tell me what the fuck it is exactly that you're wanting to do. And I will tell you if that's something that we can do. Then like, I'm like, this just isn't going to work, you know, whatever. So we get off the phone and then she calls me back like 10 minutes later. And she's like, but what about Poetic Anarchy Volume 13? Like, do you own the rights to that? And I'm like, I own the rights to that book, but I don't own the poet's work in it because it's an anthology and the poets retain the rights to their own work. And she was like totally confused. And I'm like, it's a fucking anthology. And she's like, so you don't own this book. 
I'm like, I own the book. I don't own the rights to the individual poet's poems. And she was just like all confused. And I'm like, look, do you guys even handle poetry? Because you called me about my fiction, but do you handle poetry? And she's like, oh, yes. Yeah, we can do that. I'm like, okay, what would your plan be? And she's like, well, let me ask you, what, what is your marketing plan for your book? And I'm like, I already know what my plan is. What is your plan? What are you going to do? Pitch me what you're selling. And she couldn't do it. She just couldn't fucking do it. No matter how many times I asked her to tell me what the fuck it was that they actually offer, she couldn't tell me. And the closest thing she got to it was that she's going to have her reps like represent my book at this book fair. And I'm like, okay, so... And she's like, because we need to make sure your book gets in front of the right eyes. And I'm like, okay, so who are the attendees of this book fair? And she's like, what? I'm like, you're talking about getting my book in front of the right people. So who are the people who are going to be attending the book fair? And that was like, how dare you? <laughs> so she just like went all over the place. And then finally she said, you know, traditional publishing houses. I'm like, well, I already told you I have no interest in traditional publishing houses. If a traditional publishing house wants to offer me a lot of money, that's a different story. But I already know what my stuff is worth to a traditional publishing house right now, especially my poetry. Like if you're trying to get like Netflix deals or TV deals or movie deals, that's a whole other thing, but I don't even think that's happening right now because of what's going on in Hollywood. So I'm like, what is it that you're going to offer me? And it was just this back and forth thing where I'm like, Sarah, baby, Sarah, please listen to me. And I know that's very fucking condescending, but like, I just, I felt like I needed to flirt at this moment because nothing was fucking working. And I'm like, Sarah, baby, please, can you send me your proposal in email? Like, that's all I need for you to do. If you could send me that proposal, like, I'll be able to better understand what we're talking about here. But this, you calling me every five minutes, telling me the exact same thing that I already told you no to, like, that's not working for me. So please, 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 if you can do that, I'd greatly appreciate it. And, um, I don't know. She said she would. I still haven't gotten an email from her. But um, other than that, I don't know what the fuck she was wanting to do. Like, did, I don't like I'm is she thinking I'm going to like give her a credit card for a bunch of stuff that I have no idea what she was talking about. <sighs> anyway, so just be wary. Usually if people are calling you like cold calling you and like going, oh yeah, you know, like your book got recommended to us by our scouts. Like figure out how the fuck that happened and why that is. And typically if someone's asking you for money, they can't help you unless their whole thing is that they're a marketing firm, then they could probably help you. But if they don't come out and say they're a marketing firm and they try to say it like, oh, we're a a small publishing, self-publishing, but, 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 and they say all these other words, it's just the exact same thing you can do on your own. And they're actually offering you nothing. Okay. And then also ask like, what success stories do you have? Like, oh, who are some people that you got deals for? Who are some people that like, I would know? Cause there's never going to be one. Oh, it was so fucking ridiculous. So anyway, so that's what I just did. So now I'm going to go into the goddamn post office. Nope, already did the post office. I'm going to the grocery store like a grown-ass man, and I'm going to buy some groceries like a normal person does. All right, hello, sports fans. So, oh, shit, my window's still up. It's kind of tricky trying to put my elbow through it. So we're doing something kind of fun today, hopefully. We are driving down past the orange curtain into um, Anna Slime so I can see uh, some of my friends who are from out of state that I haven't seen in fuck like five or six years. So I'm kind of excited. 
Um, I have no idea what we're going to do. I said there has to be Bloody Marys or else I'm not coming. Because, believe it or not, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I'm kind of hungover today. I had, I, I've been having meetings. I'm totally legit. I had um, meetings, like an afternoon brunch meeting, and um, ended up drinking a lot of wine because I was feeling insecure. And when people give me compliments, I don't know how to take it, so I just nodded and smiled and drank a entire bottle of white wine while they were talking to me. Then I got home just in time for a Zoom call with the producer, who's amazing. Talked about a lot of cool shit, and hopefully, I'm gonna have some really exciting fucking news to tell everybody soon. But um, gotta cross our fingers. I don't want to just start blabbing shit that ain't gonna happen. So during that meeting, I um, drank half of another bottle, of wine, and then realized that the white wine is just too fucking sweet. So I switched to red, and. Um, yeah, and that was the night. So it was it was really good. I'm I'm very hopeful. There's a lot of like amazing things coming. And one thing that the producer said to me last night was and it just really made me fucking think because I'm so fucking impatient. But she said You're planting seeds right now for things that will that you'll harvest or whatever six months from now. So don't get discouraged about anything. Like, you know, you're doing it. And it was funny that she was giving me a pep talk. I don't know. Like I, I, uh, I wasn't expecting a pep talk during that meeting, but there was one. And if you're watching, hey, how you doing? Okay, world, how are you guys doing? This is some mis 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 this is some mission impossible and bullshit right now. I can't talk. <clears throat> Here is the plan. I am trying to beat the clock right now. <laughs> I am doing laundry in the middle of a day on a weekday. That's usually unheard of. So what the plan is, is I put my clothes in for 43 minutes. Then I went back up to my apartment, got my stuff, then went up to the seventh floor and got the gate clicker from a friend of mine who is gone for the weekend and is letting me park in their parking spot in the basement. Then went down here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run to the store. I'm going to get some drinks, and then I'm going to go pay the parking garage, get the car, come back, hopefully in time, to put my clothes in the dryer because I have dryer sheets in my pants. Okay? I have less than 30 minutes to do all this now. So, we're going to see if I can nail this at the exact time. Okay. I just hurried as fast as I possibly could. Paid the lady. <sighs> Went to the store. And now, I just ran up five flights of stairs. I have 10 minutes to get to my laundry. I'm definitely gonna make it.
So check this out. I'm fucking heartbroken right now. I fucking spent all night last night editing this fucking Ann Sexton watch along. And in the middle of it, some motherfucker pulled up outside bumping Drake really fucking loud, right? So I had to wait for that to fucking end or whatever. But the video of this is like from 1966. It's all old and fucked up. And the the audio didn't match the video on a lot of parts of the thing. So I separated the audio track and fit the audio to the video as best I could. And then edited all of my parts down and all this other fucking shit. When I was saving it, my computer's like, you don't have enough room on your computer. So I did a bunch of shit, deleted a bunch of crap, finally was able to save a copy of the video and then because my computer was so full I deleted a ton of shit off my computer I upload the video okay and I get this fucking copyright strike it wasn't a strike yet because I hadn't published it it was in scheduled and I look I'm like copyright strike on what like this has to be public domain you know what the fuck I go and I look, and it's for a fucking Drake song. And I'm like, no, I fucking cut that shit out. And I fucking looked, and apparently I threw out not only the video that I edited, but I threw out the fucking, um, the workflow and everything and emptied my trash. So the only thing I had was the original fucking recording that I started with. So now I'm having to go through and re-edit the whole fucking thing again. I'm so fucking pissed. This took me like so much time last night to do. And now I'm fucking doing it again. <sighs> YouTuber problems, am I right? So anyway, I hope you enjoy it because I put a lot of fucking work in it. Oh, and another thing about this Ann Sexton thing, on the shot of her with her kid, you know, and they're arguing, it fucking sounds so much like Reagan and her mom from The Fucking Exorcist. It's like tripping me out, like in the beginning of the movie and shit. Cracks me up. Today, I am on my post office trip. And, oh, and then we're gonna go to the grocery store. Because guess what? If I'm not anything, it's consistent. I don't know if I said that right, but you catch my drift. Okay, so I have been thinking about things that we have been talking about and I have ideas and thoughts. Oh, shit, have I ever talked about this here before? I don't think I have, and I'm wondering if I should. Fuck it. Okay, so there is a documentary that has been in various stages of pre-production about yours truly for some time now. And I am not in charge of it. I am not a producer on it. Did not want to be a producer on it. Have no intention of being a producer on it. Because I think that would compromise a documentary about me. And I just don't like that idea. So, <clears throat> there have been many talks, many thoughts, and I just feel like, um, I don't know, like I feel like it's gonna happen now and it's a more serious production 
than most of the stuff I've ever been involved in. Like we haven't, we haven't shot a lick of footage, but we're, we've already had meetings about like what festivals we're gonna submit to and how much of the budget needs to be put aside for that and just shit like that. I've never been a big festival guy. I've had movies at festivals before, but I never really cared about the whole festival scene, but it's apparently a pretty fucking big deal. And you gotta fucking take it seriously, um, I guess is the rule of the land. Oh, that's green? Get the fuck out of here. Okay, someone got some free parking. I don't know how long, but it's free. So I'll take it. Anyway, I just, I don't know enough about documentary filmmaking. And maybe that's why I feel like I need to talk about this to you guys. Because if any of you out there have any idea about making documentaries, um, putting them together, if you've ever done it before, hit me up because I'm apparently... Um, the subject of a documentary film that is looking for a crew. I don't know why I fucked this up so bad, but like I was completely off on what I had to ship and how much stuff I had to ship. And now I got a heavy ass bag full of stuff. I don't know, I feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna need to hire some people or something to help me run like the just operations and there's a lot of you who've offered your help and I'm going to hit you up but like the stuff that I need the majority of the help on is like day-to-day -day shit so I don't know I gotta I gotta figure all that shit out and I don't know if, and if any of you are in um, sales like b2b sales let me know because um, that's something else I have to fucking do and I'm either not that good at it, I just don't have enough experience in it. But honestly, the documentary thing's kind of freaking me out a little bit. And every time I talk to anybody, like either on the production or um, just like friends of mine about it and say how I'm feeling, they always go, that's the kind of shit that should be in the documentary. Like, that's what you should be talking about. And I'm like, okay, well, it's probably because I document myself every fucking day on fucking YouTube, you know? It's hard to understand, like, what is documentable and what's not. But anyway, I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing, guys. I feel like I'm right on the verge, like, right on the cusp of something big. And usually... When I have this feeling, it's pretty spot on. And if the documentary is that thing, then hooray for all of us, you know? But I just don't know if that's really what it is or not. Hey, I gotta get my painting that I'm using for Jeff's cover for um, the Shipwreck Paradox. And I just gotta find it. So let me go through here. here somewhere. <laughs> This is the cover for the shit brick paradox so I got to 
um, scan this. So here we go. I fucked up the first time, so we'll see what happens. Come on, you fuck. Here it comes. What? Is that right? It seems like part of it is not there. Is that all of it? Yeah, sure. Oh no, it's all messed up. It's all fucked up. Okay, let's look over here real quick. Looks nice, right? Okay, let's see what's happening over here. I think it's all fucked up. Oh, a bunch of blank paper. How much blank paper do we have here? Oh my god, did it just print a bunch of blank paper? This has been going for a long time. Oh man. Dude, all of this is fucked up. Fuck my face, dude. Oh, this is a lot of paper to fucking toss, dude. This is bad news, guys. Bad fucking news. It's a brand new thing in ink, dude. What the fuck? Okay, so this is what we got. We got a bunch of blank paper. And then we got a bunch of blank paper. But it's not really blank. Look what happened. Fucking hell, dude. Look at that. Yeah, this is a big stack of paper. That's like seriously, like probably, I don't know, a third of what I was making. Fucking bullshit, dude. That's my box of paper that I'm tossing out. That's more stuff. There's some art on the floor. And so I gotta open this bad fucker up to get more paper in the printer. of the blood rag for this issue and that is no bueno no bueno so cross your fingers that my printer fucking prints right now because if it doesn't I'm fucked Really upset. So the new black ink cartridge I have in my printer um, isn't working for some reason. It's not, it's just nothing's there when it prints. And even though the other colors don't work, I need to have other ink cartridges in the color part or else the printer won't work. So even though I never use them, like, I have to keep putting fucking other cartridges in. And so the magenta is out because that and the blue, I don't know how the fuck this happened, but they, like, kind of exploded or leaked or something. And I'm still not getting anything. So I'm checking it right now. I, I, I swear to God, I think it's vellum paper. Like, whenever I put vellum in the printer, it just fucking kills it. I printed out all the bloodshed reviews, like all the covers with super thick, dark black. The black says it's full. I did the vellum covers for On the Beach, which, I don't know, I don't want to touch anything on the ink hold with my fucking hands. So, I don't know, I'm freaking out, freaking out hard. And I'm out of blood rags. I printed a ton of these out, front and back. And this is stupid. I can't find them anywhere. I rearranged my whole shit so I would know where everything is at all times. Can't find them. So I don't know if I took them out of the house when I left last time and left them in the car. 
seems unlikely. So I'm cleaning the print heads, and hopefully, I did that a bunch of times last night too, and I didn't get anything. Like normally it will just get a little something. I didn't get shit when I was doing this last night. And I'm like, maybe the printer's just working really hard because I've been using it all day. In it, dude. I'm fucking deep in it right now. I don't know. I need to see how many I've sold because I, I don't have enough to fill the orders. I don't. And if the printer's fucked, I'm fucked. So, Jesus Christ, dude. Like, as much as this is driving me crazy right now, this is like... Why aren't you making ebooks again? Fuck me, dude. This is a lot of fucking. This is just a lot. This is a lot of fucking, dude. A lot of fucking. In other news, I don't know when this video is gonna go up. It might be on Tuesday or Wednesday. I don't know. But I'm thinking this week or this weekend, I'm gonna have a big sale because. One of the problems I'm having is I have a lot of inventory and I would really like to clear some out. So what I'm thinking is, is because all the bloodshed review issues are seven bucks now. And I think what I'm going to do with my chat books is take those down to seven as well. And then maybe the ones that I only have a couple issues or a couple, like, copies left of, I might make them nine. So all of them will be under ten bucks. And then if you get three, I'll give you a fourth one for free. So I think that's how I'm going to do this and just see if I could clear out some stuff. Because... Especially some of the earlier ones I did um, really big numbers of, like 50, 60. Since I was coming out with them every month, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of you who, if you came to this channel like within the last year, you have like no knowledge of the books that came out last year. You know, like because I'm I'm always just like, oh, here's the new book, you know. Like, Bloodshed Review, Issue 3, pick it up now, and all this other stuff. But I never talk about, like, the old books that I still have copies of. And I think they just kind of, like, disappear out of, like, public knowledge, you know? So I'm going to do that. Dude, sometimes that printer sounds like it's fucking murdering somebody. I realized that doing the Drinking Less audiobook, ebook, and print didn't really affect my print sales. So I'm back to this thing where I feel like the people who want my chapbooks are going to want my chapbooks. And the people who aren't going to want my chapbooks, like in the first place anyway, will probably be very happy with an audiobook or an ebook. Because my biggest fear was sales cannibalization. Because that's something that fucking happens all the fucking time if people aren't fucking careful. But I really feel like I definitely have a collector's audience. But then I also have an audience of people who just like me on YouTube. Who like my stuff, but would rather just hear me fucking read my shit. And then there's the people who like to fucking load their Kindles and shit. So I feel like those are all different fucking readers. And with that said, I think where I'm going to go from here is I'm going to go pretty hard on Amazon because I feel like at least for the press's sake I need to make a bigger splash in the publishing world a bigger splash in the publishing world and people need to know like what we're doing and people find out but I feel like they find out in a roundabout way they find out either through YouTube or they find out through Instagram they're not finding out because they're running across the books or, like, seeing anything written about the books, you know? So I think I'm going to go pretty hard on that, kind of see what's what. So I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that yet. I don't know. There's a part of me that thinks I should do digital copies of the Bloodshed Review, like, a season behind. So, like, in September, put out June's Bloodshed Review in digital form. 
and shit like that. And then in October, put out um, issue two, and in November, put out issue three. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And then as far as my books, I mean, shit, I could put a new book out every other week, probably. Um, I'll probably start with three, do three ebooks, um, chapbook size, have like links to everything. I should probably have a link to my website that has all the information. I, I'm, I'm thinking here. I'm thinking here. I got all sorts of thoughts. I have a doctor's appointment coming up, and I'm going to ask him to put me on the nicotine patch and see how that works. But if I gain a fucking pound, I'm going to rip it off and figure out something else to do. And it's not even like I want to quit smoking. I just think I should be smoking less. You know? Maybe that's the next chapbook. To go with drinking less. Smoking less. I don't know. I gotta go to the fucking post office today. And I am just, like, beside myself. I just don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. Printer's fucked. I'm fucked. Oh, shit. We almost have it. Oh, my God. This is beautiful. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So I cleaned it like five or six times last night. A few times today already and nothing happened. So this is the test pattern that I got today. Where is it? I have no idea. And then this is the one I just got. So there are some spots in there. Because all we care about is the black. We don't care about the YMC or nothing like that. But look, like... That is pretty close. So if I just clean it this one last time, it should be okay. Fingers fucking crossed, man. Dude, that is such a fucking relief, man. I have been losing my fucking shit since last night thinking that thing was fucking busted. On a writing note, I'm gonna say this. There's a lot of stuff that I've been wanting to write lately that I haven't been writing because I know, A, if I write it, I will completely break down. And B, if I write it, I'll want to put it out. And if I put it out, that's going to cause some shit. Oh, I'm just having a fucking time, dude. And I have a couple friends that are really fucking helping me out, like, emotionally right now. And you guys know who you are. And thank you so fucking much. Oh, my fucking God. Would you look at that? Boom, dude. We are in biznatch. All right, guys, printed everything out, got everything to the post office, and I'm back now with an amazing spot on the Ah, <sighs> but there is, let's see, three o'clock, so there is 20 minutes left before um, they stop ticketing. So I'm just gonna, hang out in the air conditioning. Anyway, so we're gonna do that. So, talk to you soon. I just wanna give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.